Hi, I'm Hyun Sung Yoon, and I'm going to tell you about the understanding of crop insurance in South Korea. First, let me introduce myself. I work for NHN insurance company now. I have been worked for crop insurance claim team for three and a half years. And I moved I moved to crop insurance support team, which is my current team. And I'm in charge of crop insurance part. And this is my email address. So if you have any question, feel free to uh, email me. Next slide is about this lecture's contents. First, I will talk about crop insurance program overview. History. In 2001, we introduced crop insurance program for the first time. We started with Apple and Payer as a pilot program. The next year, 2002, we had very severe Typhoon Nusa, and we had the loss ratio of 433%. To help you understand, loss ratio represents the ratio of losses to premiums. So the loss ratio of 433% means that the insurance company earned premiums 100 and paid claim for 133. In this case, the insurance company realized a deficit as 333. Um, 433 minus 100 gives us 333. And 2003, we had another huge typhoon, MAMI, resulting in loss ratio of 290%. So after we introduced crop insurance in Korea, we had great damage for two consecutive years. As a result, the insurance company decided not to participate in Korea crop program. Globally, crop insurance is very large, so reinsurance company is essential factor to keep crop insurance. But in Korea, to 2009, we don't have reinsurance company. So NH was the only company which took part in crop insurance. And 2005, government reinsurance system was introduced and reinsurance company make decision to return to the program. After 2005, we kept our crop insurance program without big problem. But 2012, we had a huge typhoon polar bear and the loss ratio was 357%. To ease the burden on insurance company, the new government reinsurance program was introduced. I will explain about it in detail later. And the next is distinct characteristics. The first one is asymmetric information. Absolute predominance about the information of property insured, frequency and severity of accident, production history, farmers' ability of cultivation. So there is a potential risk of adverse selection. Um, in fact, this applies to all areas of insurance. And the second one is loss adjusting. Because the natural disaster focused on short harvest season, there is a burden of loss adjustment. When catastrophic disaster occurred, there is a shortage of the manpower. The third one is high possibility of program failure. There is a threat of catastrophic disaster, such as typhoon, because of high volatility of loss ratio, we need effective risk pooling program, um, for example, government reinsurance system. And the next thing is government subsidy. In Korea, crop insurance, in Korea crop insurance, we have government supported premium subsidy. For risk premium, 50% for central government, uh, from central government, and about 30% from local government. And for loading costs, 100% from government, central government. So a farmer only pay about 10% of a premium out of 100%. Um, USA, Canada, Spain, Japan, and almost all country running crop insurance programs support the premium. 
in order to mitigate the burden of farmer. The last thing is about government reinsurance. Um, I'm going to tell you about government reinsurance in the last part of this lecture in detail because it's a very important factor for crop insurance sustainability. Um, now I'm going to explain about crop insurance program in detail. Korea crop insurance is pre-assessed assessed insurance. To understand it, there is an important definition that is a uh, guaranteed yield. The guaranteed yield is calculated by weighting averages of the actual yield and standard yield of the farms over the past five years. Um, for your information, standard yield is calculated based on yield statistics by crop. The reason why guaranteed yield is necessary is the yield of insurance farmland are different from standard yield on the various conditions. Um, so before the insured, which is farmer, buy an insurance, they have their own guaranteed yield. And when it's harvest season, we measure the actual yield and compare the guaranteed yield and the actual yield. And we decide the amount of claim that we have to pay to farmer. I will talk about it later in detail. The next is deductible. Deductible is a very important definition in all insurance area. Um, straight deductible means the amount paid by insured before the insurer pays any money. For example, the insured can choose the deductible ratio and in the event of an insurance accident, the insured get paid over deduction. Um, now I'm going to show you how the crop insurance works. First one is uh, about named pair policy. It provides coverage on incurred losses that listed in the policy. In this policy, we perform the loss adjustment thing every single time when natural disaster occurs. Um, so let me explain with the pictures below. Um, the white one is the guaranteed yield, and we have two different natural disasters, frost and freezing and type. Frost and freezing and typhoon. Just suppose that we perform loss assessment two times, and we got to know the claim amount of each each disaster, and the sum of the two claim, we have the total loss amount, and we deduct the deductible amount and pay final claim amount. In the in the picture, the final claim amount is um, the red one. And the next one is about open peril policy. It provides coverage on loss from all kinds of natural disaster. So its premium rate is much higher than the named peril policy, uh, which means that the farmer have to pay, pay more money to buy open peril policy. Uh, in this policy, we perform loss adjusting only once to get the actual yield, actual yield. So, we get the loss amount by calculating the guaranteed yield minus actual yield. And then we deduct the deductible amount and pay the final claim amount. Um, the next is premium rate. The premium comes from multiplying the premium rate by insured amount. So the way how we calculate the premium rate is very important. In the case of the new crop, we use pure premium method. And when experience statistics are accumulated through the insurance business, rate adjustments are made to reflect those statistics by loss ratio method. Please refer to the next page. Now I'm, I'm going to talk about the business performance, annual performance. The, the table below shows statistics for the last five years. As you can see, penetration ratio is steadily going up. It's because we introduce uh, new, item, new items every year. Also, we have a government premium subsidy 
so the farmer have low burden for the premium. Um, uh, as you can see, the last three years, we have high loss ratio due to because of natural disasters such as typhoon and frost. The next slide is about the premium earned. As of 2020, we have almost 60 items. For major four crops, dominate 72.5% of the total premium. Apples make up the largest portion, followed by greenhouse and rice. Uh, now I'm going to talk about low success marks. Mm, first, let, let me explain about the insurance subscription of named pear fruit crops. Insured crops are apple, pear, sweet persimmon, and astringent persimmon. Insured risks are typhoon, hail, spring frost, heavy rain, and others named pear. Some insured ratio is between 50% to 100% of whole year and both individual and corporation can buy the insurance. Usually sales period is from February to March before spring season. Um, and please refer to the rest. Uh, the next page is about the procedure of insurance subscription. First, farmer should visit the local energy office and consult about the insurance subscription, which one they have to buy, stuff like that. And then there is pre-filled survey for insurance. So employee of local energy office visit its, its field to check the, uh, the exact insured amount, including area and the number of fruit tree. And the employee of energy, the employee of energy explains the main terms of policy. The next slide. The next slide shows us about the insured risk. Basically, most natural disasters could be covered by the insurance, such as typhoon, hail, fire, spring, for, spring forest. And the table below shows a uh, related organization and their uh, roles. Uh, please refer to the table. Um, this is about the category of loss adjusters group. Um, the first group is cert certified loss adjusters. Um, the number of this group is about 857. These days, the number is expected to exceed about uh, 10,000. To be a member of this group, um, they must obtain a government recognized certificate. This system is introduced in 2016. Um, the next group is private loss adjustment company. The number of this group is about um, 480. In fact, the people in this group have the most professional skills. And this group engaged loss adjustment since uh, the introduction of crop insurance in 2001. Their history is quite long. And the last group is general loss adjuster. Actually, they are uh, also farmers and employee of energy local office. The number of this group is about um, 12,000. But now their number is expected to be around 14,000. Even if their numbers are a lot, uh, but when the natural disaster occurs, they tend not to be called up well because they are interested in their own farmland. Uh, next is the table of procedure of loss assessment. To sum up briefly, in the event of a natural disaster, the parish holder go to the local energy office and notify the claim occurrence. And then the employee of local energy office report to NHPNC, uh, which means insurance company. And and then NHPNC allocate loss adjusters. And after loss adjuster finish field survey, NHPNC calculate and pay the, uh, the insured the claim. The next 
uh, passes criteria of loss assessment. If you look at the bottom column of the table, there is an explanation of survey. It is the investigation. Uh, there are two ways of survey. Uh, the first one is complete enumeration survey. This is the investigation for all the sum insured in each farm. The other one is sampling survey. To save time and manpower, we take samples of farm and examine them and represent the whole farm. In the event of a major natural disaster, a sample survey shall be conduct conducted. The next page shows the detail of sampling survey. Uh, let's say, suppose there's a typhoon and the crop is apple. In this case, it's impossible to survey the whole farmland because it takes a lot of time. So sampling survey is usually conducted. The loss adjusters go to the field and count fallen fruits, how many fruits have fallen. And then we categorize the fruit from 100% loss to non-loss fruits. Uh, please refer to the table next to its classification criteria. And table below shows how the loss ratio is calculated. Let's go to the next page. If you take a look at the table, it says how many samples we need to set according to the number of the insured trees. And there are some photos below. In the first picture, loss adjuster tie ribbon to a sample tree to mark a sample. And in the middle photo, you can see some fallen fruit. Um, I guess it's uh, because of the typhoon. Loss adjuster count those uh, fruits and categorize three different groups according to the damage uh, you can see in the last picture. And the next page explains about how select the sample trees. The number of total tree is um, 490. So let's say that. And so we have to select 19 sample trees. Because 490 divided by 19 is 26. So we select sample trees between um, you know, every 26 trees. Um, let's go to the next page. It's about the education. We train loss adjusters every year. Nowadays, because of uh, you know COVID-19 pandemic, we are avoiding collective training, but we are replacing it with video. Um, this is uh, the calculation of claim amount, but we already talked about it, so let's just test this part. So it's actually not that uh, difficult one, so please refer to the table. Mm -hmm. um, the last page of loss assessment section is about claim payment process. Usually payment should be done within seven days from the confirmation of claim amount after harvest season. Uh, we are trying to keep this time of claim payment to ease farmers' uh, financial burden. The below table is procedure of claim payment. Just click reference, please. And the last section is reinsurance. Reinsurance is a very important factor for crop insurance sustainability. In the event of natural disaster, um, such as typhoon, hail, the claim payment is very huge. So spread of risk is essential uh, for stable operation in the long term for the insurance company. Um, so I'm going to start with a summary on reinsurance. Um, first, uh, primary insurer is NHPNC, uh, which is uh, my company. And reinsurer, government, 
uh, about ring shutter, uh, we have a government ring shutter and some domestic ring shutter. And government ring shutter structure is profit at loss, profit at loss sharing system. Then the definition of insurance is the practice whereby insurer transfer each portion for risk to the other insurer for reducing its risk. Um, next page shows the change of government protection cover, protection cover by year. From 2001 to 2004, we don't have government insurance. In 2005, government reinsurance system was introduced. If the loss ratio exceeds uh, 180%, the government reinsurance takes loss over 180%. That means reinsurance company is only responsible for the loss under 180%. Reinsurance in this work, re reinsurance like this um, is called stop loss. From 2005 to 2018, the government reinsurance scheme was uh, stop loss. In 2019, the new government reinsurance system was introduced. Um, that was profit and loss sharing system that uh, we are using right now. Um, this slide explains about the stop loss way. Uh, you can just uh, refer to the page and the next page shows profit and loss sharing system. The main point of this way is that government and insurance company share the profit of loss. The biggest advantage of this method is that it reduces the volatility of insurance companies, uh, their financial burden. The detailed application method is divided into three steps. The first step is for the government and insurance company to decide its stake. And the second step is to allocate profit and loss according to the loss ratio. The last step is uh, the additional settlement of the profit and loss at the rate of 6.5%. Uh, um, you can refer to profit and loss dis distribution table. And uh, please refer to the examples. Actually, uh, it is very complicated, so um, you don't have to understand all of this. Um, but just remember that uh, it's the insurance government insurance system. Its biggest advantage is that uh, it reduces the volatility of insurance companies, their uh, financial burden. That's the main point. So um, this was my uh, lecture on crop insurance in Korea. Um, as I said before, if you have any questions, uh, please send me an email and I will reply for that. And thank you so much.